Well, um, thank you very much, Neil, for those uh, thoughtful and, and informative uh, opening. Um, and most of all, thank you very much for your service on the board and your good work for this community for, for many years. Um, uh, and good afternoon and welcome everyone again to the Greater Canoa Valley Foundation's annual meeting. Um, we're here tonight to do a couple of things, right? We're here tonight to um, celebrate over 50 years of good work of this foundation. It's pretty amazing that an organization is around so long, does so much good, and we really appreciate the time that you're taking here to celebrate that with us. We're also here to talk about what's next for the foundation, right? Uh, we've been in a planning process for the last six or eight months or so, uh, more of what I call a strategic thinking process myself. Uh, and tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've learned through that process and where we think the foundation is headed. Uh, the last thing and, and probably the most exciting thing for me is that we're also here to think about what's next for West Virginia. Uh, we have some incredible doers and thinkers in the audience tonight who are going to come up and, and really give us some insight into what they see as the future of the state. Um, <clears throat> as, uh, as Nail said, my name's Thomas Watson and um, I run a small uh, management support firm called Rural Support Partners out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I've had the pleasure over the last six or eight months or so to help facilitate uh, the strategic thinking process of the Greater Canoa Valley Foundation. Um, it, 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 um, it has been a wonderful process. I so appreciate the opportunity to do it and I can't tell you how much that we've learned from the process ourselves. Um, tonight, my purpose here is, is to do a few things. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where we've been in, in terms of concretely. I'm going to talk about the process itself. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the guiding principles that underlie the process. I'm going to talk about what we've learned from this process. We've engaged about 150 of the Foundation's major stakeholders and partners to think with us about what the major issues are in our community and where the Foundation may create the greatest impact uh, with both its grant making and the other tools it has in its toolbox. And then I want to give you a little bit of, uh, of insight into where we think the foundation is headed. I want to give you a, a set of draft uh, mission and vision and value statements. I want to talk a little bit about the goals that are coming forth with, through the process. And I want to talk about the areas where we believe after this process that the foundation can make the greatest difference or the greatest impact for the people and places that it cares about. Um, but before I get into to all of those things, um, I would like to take this moment, uh, just a second, and, and thank some folks here. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to thank the board and the staff of the foundation. Um, I have to be honest with you, I, I do this work all over the southeast, work with a lot of foundations, work with a lot of organizations, and, and it's rare, very rare, for a foundation to really take such a big step back and to take a hard look at itself, a hard look at the work that it's doing, uh, to really listen to the constructive criticism and the praise and the thoughts of its partners and come out the other end with a pretty bold and fearless, and you'll hear that word again in a moment, pretty bold and fearless uh, direction forward. So let's give the board and staff just a wonderful applause for their work and their dedication to this community to start with. Um, the second thing I want to do is to thank everybody in the room here. Um, you know, we don't celebrate enough, period, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it, and we don't celebrate enough uh, because we have some incredibly busy lives these days. I guarantee you that everybody in here has three plates of work waiting on you at the office. You got kids to pick up, you got 100 emails waiting on you, you got texts, you got uh, Twitters, you got um, Tumblrs, whatever that is. You got it all waiting there coming at you, right? And all of those things keeps us from just taking a moment to stop and appreciate and celebrate the goodness around us. I'll give you a good example. My, my last birthday, I, I called a friend of mine. I said, hey, meet me for lunch. Uh, he texts me back and says, hey, I don't have time to meet you for lunch. Apparently didn't have time to pick up the phone and tell me he didn't have time either. Right? Uh, and then I go to lunch with some other friends. I come back, and I've got an email waiting in my box uh, there from him. It says, happy birthday, and it's got all these big balloons and stuff. And you know, I haven't heard from him since. That was uh, nine months ago. <laughs> right? And so, so just an example of how busy our lives are how much we rely on technology and how little time we take to just celebrate. So I just want to both acknowledge your presence here and thank you for taking the time to celebrate with the foundation. Give yourselves a round of applause for just being with us today and taking the time to celebrate the good work of this historic foundation. You know, the, the last thing I want to do is, is to um, thank the folks who are coming next. Uh, I, I have to be honest with you, it is an incredible and humbling honor to be the opening band for such a powerhouse of thinkers and doers to come. <laughs> now you can see on the screen here who all is coming behind me. These folks have been out creating change, 
uh, and leading this uh, state for many, many years. And I'm so excited to have them come tonight and, and really give their insights into where you think we're going as a state. So let's give these folks a round of applause and thank you both for your service and for being here tonight. We so appreciate the work that you're doing. <clears throat> so um, the first thing I want to start with tonight is to talk a little bit about the journey that the foundation has been on. Um, before I do that, I also want to acknowledge that my screens aren't quite as big as I thought they would be, right? And when your whole presentation revolves around the screen, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing in advance that you may not be able to see these. I'll do the best I can of reading these out. Um, and uh, there's another screen back there that hopefully everybody will get a glimpse at, at what we're doing here. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the journey, right? So the foundation has been on a journey for several years now. It hasn't just been the last six or eight months. But the foundation's been on a journey of moving toward these things, right? Um, the first one is really a systems approach to community change. So not looking at one project, not looking at one community, not looking at one program, but really trying to understand the systems in which we are trying to change, whether it's the educational system, the health system, uh, the system that works to build communities, the community system itself, and really beginning to understand where those systems are strong, where the assets are in those systems, how do we build on those things, where might the system be weak, where might it be missing pieces, and where can the foundation uh, get involved in that system and make the greatest impact possible so that the whole system moves forward and not just a piece of it and not just a program for these people, or not just a project for those folks, but that the whole system creates better impacts for all the folks that it serves. The next big piece that the foundation has been working toward is this collective analysis and vision. Even tonight is a part of that. Um, there's a belief that, that um, the more we can think together, and the more that we can understand the issues that are holding us back, the better off we all are about connecting our work and adding it up. It's, it's this notion of all of us heading down a similar path. We don't all have to be on the same bus. We don't all have to be in the same destination. But the more that we're thinking together, the more that we're understanding the issues that's holding us back, looking at the assets that we have to build on, then the more likely that our work is going to connect and add up to more than a single part. The other big piece is being more focused and proactive. You know, the foundation has limited resources, it has limited energy and efforts, and the more focused that we can be on the most impactful areas that the foundation believes it can affect, then the better off uh, the, all of the work and the people and places the foundation cares about are going to be. So you're going to see tonight that the foundation is still doing a lot of the same work, it's just getting more focused on the areas that it believes that it can make the greatest impact to create more outcomes for more people. Right? And then the last thing is we're trying to gain clarity on the impact of the foundation itself. What concretely is changing because of the work of the foundation? We have revised the application process. We are um, learning better and better how those reporting requirements now can help the foundation understand where it's going. And we're getting clear and clear on the kind of outcomes that we want to create so that the foundation can adjust itself as it understands what's changing because of the work. All of this journey has been for one very clear purpose, right? And that's to create better outcomes for the families and the children and the communities that the foundation cares about. That's the main goal, right? And so um, I want to tell you just a little bit about the process that we've been through. And I, again, I recognize you, you are not going to be able to see this slide very well. But the foundation over the last year or so has been doing multiple things to move in this direction, right? And the first one started about this time last year where the foundation adopted this thing called community wealth creation. Now I'm going to talk about community wealth creation here in just a moment, but it's a real simple tool to help us understand the various parts of a community that make it strong and resilient. Helps us to see where it's weak, where it's strong, and where the foundation can make a bigger difference, right? So not only did the foundation adopt this, this systems approach, it actually changed the application process, changed the reporting requirements, and did some training with the grantees up front about this sort of new way of thinking, right? And so um, we still have some work to do there, but that's where we started. Uh, and then a little bit after that, we had a big board and staff retreat. And at the board and staff retreat, we took a look at all the data that we could find around the, the issues and the areas of interest that the foundation cared about. We took all the knowledge and, and the wisdom of the staff and the board, and, and we actually used all those reports that y'all gave back to the foundation to help us understand what we have, uh, what's missing, and where the foundation could make a bigger difference, right? 
Uh, we took all of that work uh, that came out of that, and, and that was a hard couple of days, let me, let me tell you, <laughs> right up front. It was a very long couple of days. Uh, but we took all of that work back to the board. The board refined it. They, they sifted it a bit more. They got pretty clear on some ideas they'd like to take out to the rest of the stakeholders and partners, and they also identified who those folks are. And then we took it out. We took the show on the road, right? First thing we did is we met with the advisory board. We showed them the best thinking. They said, well, boy, some of that sounds good. Some of it doesn't sound so good, right? So they helped us to refine some of the ideas. Then we took it out to the major donors, and we said, you know, here's what we think about uh, the world in which we live. Here's where we think we're, we're doing well. Here's where we think we need some work. Here's where we think the foundation can make a difference. And the donors gave us some really good feedback. Um, and then we begin to organize the stakeholders, the partners, the folks who are out there on a daily basis doing the work that the foundation cares about. So we organized um, folks around education. We brought together about 50 folks to think with us for three hours on the educational, on the things that are holding us back from better educational outcomes. Uh, we had a, a big meeting around uh, with folks in the health sector. We had a big meeting with folks who are out there building communities every day. And we had a, a, a big meeting with folks who are, who are uh, fostering civic engagement and political leadership, right? And, and, we, and we just unveiled the ideas and the best thinking that we had with all of those folks in each one of those individual meetings, about 150 people total, uh, and we asked for their feedback. And, and we got a lot of it. <laughs> and, and so we've incorporated that feedback into a lot of what we're doing, and that's what I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to show you what we've learned through that process, and I'm going to show you where we've come out the other end of where we think the foundation is headed. I also want to say that what I'm going to show you tonight is a little bit uh, premature. It's a little preliminary, right? Because tomorrow and Thursday is the final meeting in this strategic planning process, right? We're bringing the board and the staff back together to sift all the stuff you're going to see tonight one more time, right? And get one more layer of refinement and focus. So everything you see tonight is kind of draft, right? But we didn't want to miss the opportunity to show what we've learned and to show where we think the foundation is headed in such an important meeting like this. So, um, so I guarantee you what you're going to see tonight is going to look a little different when it comes back out in June, but this is the basics of what we know, what we've learned, and where we think the foundation is headed. So um, before, we, uh, before I get into sort of what we've learned, I do want to give a couple of, uh, just a little bit of information around the guiding ideas behind all of this process. Um, this first one, and, and you see it in, here in the room, and it just makes uh, good common sense, right? there's been a shift in mindset, right? And, it, and it's much more of an investor in community change. So um, pretty simple concept, right? It, all of us in here have, have invested in something, whether it be stocks or a house or a piece of land or a car, whatever it may be. And when you're an investor, you take your research and your homework very seriously. Uh, you talk to anybody that you can. You look at all the data that you can. You figure out where the best deal is or where the best investment is. You make that investment with a very clear and stated idea on the kind of return that you're going to get on that investment, right? And so, and then you track that investment over a period of time to see if you're getting the proper return and you adjust as you go to make sure that your investment is creating the biggest return that you can possibly get. Same mindset with the foundation these days, right? It's an investor's mindset, so we want to do our homework up front, which is what we've been doing over the last uh, several months here, and we want to do a better job of tracking the return on those investments so that we can adjust and move as we need to to create the biggest change possible uh, for the communities and people that the foundation care about. The second notion is around um, community wealth creation. You've heard this uh, several times tonight, and, and this is a fairly simple idea as well. It, it is that it takes lots of things to make a community strong and resilient. And the more of those things that we can see and understand, then the better off we're going to be to both understand what uh, wealth that we already have, and we have a lot of it, and how we can build on that wealth to grow other forms of wealth, it also helps us to understand where we may be lacking in some wealth and where the foundation can make a difference so that everything moves forward. Because if you just focus on the individual wealth without focusing on the social wealth or the financial wealth, then you're never going to move the whole needle, right? So when you look at these forms of wealth, we're talking about the intellectual wealth. That's the knowledge and the innovation that's going to continue to help us be on top of the economy, it's going to continue to make West Virginia thrive. It's the individual wealth, it's the skills, the education, the health, the income of the people that we care about. It's the social wealth, those trusting relationships that helps us along the path, picks us up when we fall down. It's the natural wealth that we have, our natural resources, both being able to use and sustain those over the long term. It's the built wealth, it's all the infrastructure that helps us get to point A to point B to, to do the things that we need to do in the world. It's the political wealth 
which means that we all have some ability to shape the decisions that affect our lives and our families. And it's the financial wealth, which is investments that can be reinvested into the community, whether it's savings or whether it's a community foundation or whether it's uh, a, 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 a nonprofit who can continuously reinvest in the community and the projects it cares about. So what the foundation has been doing a lot um, is looking at these forms of wealth, figuring out sort of where, what wealth we have, what wealth we're missing, and where the foundation can help grow the wealth that needs to grow. It's a simple idea of trying to fill up the bathtub. Right? Y'all have seen this, uh, some of y'all have seen this, this uh, image several times. If we only think about the water coming in and we don't think about the drain plug, we may never fill up the bathtub, right? And one of the things we continue to talk about is the scholarships. One of the, one of the more important things the foundation does, and they'll, I think, mention tonight there's 350 or so scholarships that went out, and boy, that's good work and absolutely necessary for the communities that we care about. And if 80% of those folks who get a scholarship have to move to New York or Charlotte or to um, D.C. to get a job, did we really fill up the bathtub? And so it's a matter of connecting the dots in terms of getting those folks back to a summer internship, opening up new jobs in a diverse economy so they actually have a place, building new housing downtown so that we actually have some cool spots to come hang out um, uh, while you're uh, visiting pies and pints. Right? So, so it's all of those things that, that really help to fill up the bathtub. You know, it's this notion, though, that um, even to get the water to the house is an unbelievable system. And you all know this better than anybody in the world that if this system breaks down in any place, then the water doesn't even get to the house, right? And so part of the process is really understanding the systems as good as we can, figuring out where they're strong, figuring out where they're weak, figuring out where they need to be shored up so that it all works for everybody all the time, right? Now let me say I had this slide long before the water issues hit Charleston, so <laughs> this, is not, this was not planned, but <laughs> I've been using this one for a while. It's such a good analogy to understand sort of the systems approach. Um, so with all of those sort of guiding principles in mind, I want to share a little bit of language with you. Now, I, I, as I've said already, these are draft forms right now, and these are going to change as we move forward, but they give you a good indication of sort of where the foundation is headed and how the foundation is thinking these days. So here's the draft vision statement. Um, and um, we started out with this thing, and, and I tell you, it just continues to ring for me uh, time and time again. So the found, this is the foundation's vision for the communities that it cares about. So we envision a forward-thinking and closely connected community where residents fearlessly work together to promote the education, health, and prosperity of all. Now there's that word fearless again, right? Uh, when that word first came out, I thought, boy, that's an odd thing to put in a vision statement, right? Never seen it before. Um, and I said, boy, do y'all really want to hang on to that one? Because that, that's a pretty bold statement, right? <laughs> that means y'all are going to have to be fearful first right, or fearless first, and it means you're going to have to press everybody else to be there with you, right? Every one of the board members said, you know, that's the right word, and we want to keep it. So, uh, so here's the vision, right? And so then we say, well, if that's the vision, then what's the foundation do to help move us toward that vision, right? So here's the updated mission statement. So the, the Greater Kanoa Valley Foundation seeks to make thoughtful and proactive investments that grow the multiple forms of wealth necessary for children, families, and communities to thrive. The forms of wealth that we seek to grow include the individual, intellectual, social, political, natural, built, financial assets within our communities. You can see this notion of wealth creation here. You can see this notion that it takes a lot to make a strong family, a strong community, and the foundation is trying to see it all and doing what it can to move the whole needle. Here's the last thing I'd want to share, and this is a set of value statements. Now, these have some writing behind them, but I just want to share the highlights. These are the things that you can expect the foundation to continue to do. I think the foundation's always done these things, but we want to be clear about them so that, um, so that we can hold ourselves accountable and we can uh, hold everybody else accountable to them as well. But it's to lead with integrity and respect for all. It's to act with a long-term perspective. It's to build on the assets of our community. It's to seek excellence starting with the foundation and pressing everybody else to do the same. It's to promote inclusiveness and it's to take a collaborative approach to the work that we do. Uh, the foundation can't do this alone. Uh, it has never done it alone. And, and the more that we can work together and think together, uh, the more change we're going to be able to create. So, um, so I want to start uh, uh, by talking a little bit about the process here and the, a core piece of the process. You know, there's, there's been a lot that's happened, but one of the main things that we've really been working on is trying to get to the roots. 
Uh, what are the root issues that are holding back better outcomes in the places and people that the foundation cares about? There's lots and lots of issues out there. And what we want to figure out is where are the leverage issues, right? Pull one issue, it changes four other things, right? So that's the conversation that we've been having with everybody. Now, I just want to remind everybody that historically, here's the fields of interest of the foundation. They're health and education, uh, human services, recreation and land use, arts and culture, basic needs and donor advised funds. We serve the counties of Boone, Clay, Fayette, Lincoln, Kanawha, and Putnam counties. And so the foundation actually started by looking at all these issues, looking at every piece of data we could find, taking all the knowledge that we had within the board and staff and from the reports that we could pull, and we began to do this. We began to say, well, um, you know, what are the issues that's holding back better outcomes? What, what are they? And we threw them all out. And then we begin to sort those issues into three categories. And I'm using what I call a little problem tree here, right, to kind of, uh, as an analogy. But, you know, if you think about um, the issues that are in our society, uh, some of those issues are symptoms. And, and if you think about those as the green part of the tree, right, easy to see, you know, you see them every day, you walk out of here and you'll see them, right? There's homelessness, there's their substance abuse, there's, uh, there's all kinds of things, there's lower grades in school. You can see these issues, you know they're there, you can touch them, right? There are other issues that would represent sort of the trunk of the tree, right? And these are supporting issues. These are things that are a little harder to see, but boy, they keep those symptoms in check and they just keep perpetuating what we've always known, right? And then there are the root causes. And those are awfully hard to see and they are awfully hard to fix and make a dent on. We normally don't tackle them because they are so hard. And we take that short-term view, you, no way you can solve them in a few years. You really have to dig on them for a while, right? But that's what we're trying to get to. The foundation is trying to understand where are the root causes that are holding back uh, the out better outcomes for families, children, and communities, and that keeps these systems in perpetual motion, right? So this is the conversation that we've been having internally and with the partners. So um, once we spent a whole day looking at all the data and all the knowledge and information that folks had, we threw up, you know, we did that individually, and so we had all these sort of like five different root cause analysis individual sessions, and then we took all of those roots from all of those issue areas and we put them up on the wall and we said, boy, you know, what's the core roots here that's holding everything that we care about back? And here's the four that begin to bubble up. Let me tell you that this process was hard uh, and it took a long time. It's probably not exactly right for everybody in this room, but this is where the board and staff uh, landed. And we saw four major areas that were holding back better outcomes in most of the areas that the foundation cared about. That first one was just a lack of cohesion and trust within communities. That's within my own community and across communities that we care about. It's this lack of effective leadership at all levels. And we talked about this multiple times in just about everything from the grassroots all the way to the top, um, effective and visionary leadership. The poor health of the population. And then the last one's an un underperforming education system and ill-prepared students to, to go out into the world. And that includes early childhood, vocation school, high school, college, uh, all the way through. So once we got clear on sort of these issues, we then took those out and began to have deeper conversations. So um, within the stakeholders, we organized folks around education, health, community building, and leadership, right? So we took these sort of roots that the foundation discovered, and we said, we need some other folks to help us understand where the foundation can make a difference in these areas. So we organized our first um, educational stakeholder meeting. We had about 50 folks who came together for a three-hour period. They came from all of the counties that, that the foundation cared about. They came from all levels of education. And we said to those folks, what's holding us back? Right? Where are the issues that's holding us back? Where do you think the foundation can make the greatest impact? And here's where the educational folks landed. They said, well, here's the root causes. It's a lot around attitudes and, and culture, right? There's a disconnect between families and schools. There's, a, there's an attitude of not valuing education nor valuing the teachers who support education, right? There is silos between and among the sectors. There's silos between early childhood and the elementary school and the high school and colleges. There's silos between education and health. We're not as connected as we should be, is the message that we heard. Economic disparity, obviously. Lack of investment in early childhood education. Lack of leadership development at multiple levels and this isolation within and between communities. We need folks to help us along the path, not enough folks helping us along the path. So here's what the education folks had to say. Here's the root causes of holding us back. Now, we also said, 
what assets do we have? And I know you can't see this slide, but we also have tremendous assets in the educational world. Right? There are hundreds of folks out there trying to address these issues, uh, doing it diligently every day in every way possible. What we're trying to figure out is, is how can the foundation help the folks who are trying to do this better, get better at it? How do we connect folks so the work adds up over a period of time? And so we're not only looking at the issues, but we're also trying to very understand all the wealth and all the assets that already exist so the foundation can build on those uh, great work and really create those partnerships necessary to move the whole sector forward. So then we did the same thing in health. And I'll, I'll have to tell you, this was the liveliest group. We had about 45 folks in this group, and, and, and they did uh, one, an incredible job over three hours uh, of, um, of teasing these things out. And, and here's where the root causes that's holding back better health outcomes. Here's what the health experts had to say. It's poverty and the effects of poverty. We, we know this. It's the lack of diverse economy and jobs. It's poor educational outcomes. It's cultural attitudes. It's the lack of leadership at multiple levels. You begin to see some trends already, right? And these are two very different groups um, with very different folks involved, looking at very different sectors, but we begin to see some common connections, right? And that's exactly what we're looking for. Also, a tremendous amount of health assets. My goodness, there's amazing health work going on here. The question for the foundation is how do we help these folks get better at the work? How do we connect the dots between the folks who are doing the work so all of it adds up to a little more than its individual parts? The third big meeting that we had was around community building. These are folks out trying to build community, trying to organize folks, trying to make our communities better on a daily basis. And here's what they had to say that was holding back better outcomes in our community. This lack of leadership, lack of diverse leadership, a short-term perspective versus a long-term vision, inequity, lack of resources to make change, and lack of cross-cultural connections within our communities. Again, lots of folks doing this work, lots of folks out there building community on a daily basis. How do we help them get better at the work? The last big meeting that we had was around leadership and civic engagement. And the same, same idea here. We took all the issues and we put them all up on the wall and then we sorted them out. We sifted them out into the symptoms, into the supports, and into the root causes. And here's what the folks uh, around leadership and civic engagement said. Uh, there's a lack of civic and cultural investment. There's low levels of engagement and empowerment within our communities. There's a lack of a world-class education system, inequity and oppression. There's a mental um, lack, there's an apathetic attitude, this sort of mentality of the lack of. Cultural conditions and, circum and circumstantial issues, this lack of exposure and experiences, learned behaviors, all of those are kind of that cultural piece. There was a lot of conversation around you know, our Appalachian culture, and you know, I grew up right down the road in Galax, Virginia, so I know, I know our culture pretty well, and, and you know, we got some incredible assets in our culture, and we got some things that kind of keep holding us back, right? I mean, my papa never went to the doctor a day in his life. When I decided to go back to college, he said, why in the world did you do that, right? And he's one of the best men in the world, but that's just the cultural attitudes that, that get to work, don't go to the hospital, right? So some of those have to change for us. So, um, and again, lots of stuff going on around leadership development, civic engagement, tons of good work that's happening. We're going to hear from a lot of those folks here in just a moment. So, um, so when we get to the end of this thing, what we did is we took all of those roots that came from all of those meetings that we did, and we put them up on the wall, and we said, boy, what's the common connections, right? Where's the common thread between all of these root cause issues, and where do we think that the foundation should begin to try, or continue to try, to make a major difference, right? And here's the areas that naturally came up. And you heard these themes through all of these pieces. You know, this underperforming education system and ill-prepared students, not enough strong and visionary leadership at all levels, poor health of the population, economic disparities and lack of diverse economy, weak community connections and lack of collaboration, apathetic attitudes and unhelpful cultural beliefs. Those were the roots out of all the meetings that I just described, all the 150 people that we engaged, there's where we landed. If we made significant progress on these issues, then the belief is that we create better outcomes for most of the people and the places that the Community Foundation cares about. Right? And so there's where we are, right? There's our analysis. That's what we learned through this process, through the engagement of 150 people or so. And so, and these weren't just people. These were the leaders out there trying to change these issues, working on these issues on a daily basis. So that gets us down to where the foundation is headed, right? And so what's beginning to frame up is sort of four buckets of work. There's work, continued work around education, there's continued work around health, there's continued work around community building, and there's continued work around leadership and civic engagement. 
What concretely does that mean? Well, here's a beginning, right? And this is where the foundation, the board and the staff, is going to begin to sift and refine and get more focused because what we've already heard from the board is this is too much and we want to focus even more than this, right? But what we've tried to do is two things here. We've tried to carve out the long-term condition that the foundation would like to create. And that's a big long-term vision, right? The purpose of creating that long-term condition is to bring lots of folks around with us, right? Because we have to have the long-term vision, the, the foundation really using its leadership to begin to create the big tent, the big umbrella where lots of folks can get underneath it. So here's the first one in education. Here's the condition that we'd like to see. We're a community, we're students, you know, from early childhood to post-secondary, build the skills, the knowledge, and credentials to become productive and successful adults. It's a pretty good condition. It's true for many of the students who are coming through our system. It is not true for lots of kids coming through the systems. And then we said, well, where can the foundation have an impact, right? Because that's a nice statement, and that's a good condition. But concretely, where do you think you can make a difference that's going to help move that whole system forward? And so we have a list here of um, six or seven places where we think the foundation can make a difference. And the bold ones, the first four ones, are the ones that the stakeholders said, you know, we think that you should make the most difference here. We think you can make the most difference here, and we think if you made the difference here, it would make the most difference in the educational system. Those four areas are this. So inspire programs that connect parents to their children's development at home, in school, and community centers, beginning in early childhood. Expand access to after school and summertime tutoring and mentoring programs for reading, science, math, arts, and culture. Support post-secondary guidance and career advisory services and grow workforce development and vocational programs that train and certify workers in promising sectors. Right? Now there's a couple of other down here to pro promote collaboration among educational institutions, support arts and science programs in and out of the schools, and increase marginalized students' access to technology and resources. But you can begin to see here we're trying to get focused. Right? And here's where we believe that the foundation can make a significant difference in the educational sector which we believe would help the whole sector to move forward and to create better outcomes for the kids that all of us care about. So the next area of focus is health, right? Pretty simple condition we're trying to create is that we're a community where the healthy choice is the easy choice, right? It's easy for me to stop smoking. It's easy for me to lose weight. It's easy for me to get to the doctor. And so where do we think the foundation can have the greatest impact? Here's the four areas. We believe the foundation can promote and develop the capacity of communities, organizations, and entrepreneurs who focus on recreation, ecotourism, farming, and healthcare. Help folks who are doing this get stronger and better at it, right? Promote healthy lifestyle choices through training and support and education. Expand public green space and promote bikeable, walkable communities. Improve access to healthcare and well being programs for all. Those are four core areas that we believe the foundation can make a difference, and we believe if it did with our partners, that the whole health world would move toward this condition we're trying to create. The next one's around community building. And this one, the community uh, building piece, long-term condition we're trying to create, is a community where people have the relationships and trust across place, race, and class. We have shared community visions and the capacity to create positive change. The four areas we think the foundation can make a significant difference in is expand community-wide visioning and planning efforts and help communicate those visions so there's broad-based community participation and buy-in. Help build strong relationships and connections within communities and between communities and support organizations. Increase diversity in leadership positions and boards. Support efforts that result in safe and secure communities. The last one is around leadership development and civic engagement. The condition that the foundation would like to see created is that we're a community of full of strong and visionary and effective leaders who are grounded in the needs and desires of our greater community. We believe the foundation can make a difference in four areas. Invest in early childhood and youth programs that prepare children for a lifetime of leadership. Leadership starts early. You either believe you are or you don't, right? Uh, promote civic engagement, uh, public forums, community service and voting. Build capacity and promote networking among grassroots community-based nonprofits and other groups. Increase connections and dialogue between public officials, businesses, nonprofits, the general public and community leaders. So you can see there's a lot of themes here around capacity, a lot of themes around connections, a lot of themes around addressing some of the major issues that continue to hold the folks that we all care about behind. So when you think about it, if the foundation began to make some progress on these things, then you begin to see that all the forms of wealth begin to grow. Right? 
and, and they begin to grow in tandem so that everything and everybody is moving with it, right? Now, we're going to use these forms of wealth in this, in this chart that you see on here to help the foundation make decisions, to help us track the impact and results that we're making, and help to ensure that we continuously take that systems view so that we're not leaving any one part of this piece behind. So um, the last thing I'd say here about the foundation is that it does a lot more than just make grants, right? And one of the things we continue to talk about, you've heard me say several times tonight, is that there is a new focus on being proactive, right? So what does that mean for a foundation? Well, it means you do a lot more than grant making, and it means you got a deeper toolbox than just grants and investments. And so the tools that we continue to talk about in the foundation is being able to leverage its assets. If we have $100, I guarantee you we can turn it into two. Right? So bringing more resources, using the assets that the foundation has to bring re more resources into our communities. Provide leadership, influence how people think, advocate for the things that we care about. It's that fearless piece there, right? Convening, you know, we brought all these stakeholders together. Most folks said, boy, we'd like to do this more often. We found a lot of value in this. And then capacity building. There's a lot of people doing great work they generally lack a lot of resources. They often lack the sort of skills and development to do the next layer of work. So how can we help everybody get better at what we're doing? When we surveyed the 150 stakeholders that we engaged in this, we said, where do you think, uh, besides grant making, the foundation can make a difference? And here's what we got back. Convene stakeholders to foster collaboration, right? We all need to work together. We don't have time to call our own meeting, right? So the foundation can act as a convener. Be a leader by communicating this new vision and mission. Uh, bring other organizations or businesses into this effort. Help us all to get that common analysis vision and been on the same page. Encourage more positive media coverage and build the capacity of partners and connect them to more funding and more resource opportunities. All right, these are the things that the core stakeholders of the foundation said would make a difference in their work and it's the non-grant making proactive toolbox of the foundation. So um, we recognize that change is scary, right? And, and we've talked to lots of folks um, about this change. And, uh, and we asked folks when we surveyed, when we did this last survey, what, what's your main concerns here? And, and I want to address three of them right now. Uh, and you probably have more than this, and you can talk to the staff and, and folks after this uh, meeting. But there, there are three sort of core questions that came up that I just want to speak to. And of course, this first one is a um, pretty simple one. Uh, will we get funded? Right? <laughs> That's on everybody's mind. Well, um, uh, obviously the foundation is going to continue to be a grant maker, <laughs> right? A and um, I think the foundation will continue to be clear that you saw we're going to become more focused, right? A and so the more in line uh, that you are as a grantee or as a nonprofit uh, with the things that you just saw that the foundation is heading towards, the more likely you'll get a grant, right? And the further you are away from those things, the less likely that you'll be funded by the foundation. Uh, now, it's just a reality in the sense that as you get focused, some things will not be in your line of vision, right? And that's where we are at the foundation. Some of that's going to be painful for folks, and we believe over the long term that it's going to lead to greater outcomes, more impact, and, uh, and, and better uh, situations for the families and the communities that we care about. The second one is, uh, what about the basic needs? You didn't see a lot of basic needs stuff in a lot of the things that we talked about. Um, I want to assure everyone, and this is the board and staff wants to assure everyone, uh, that the foundation will continue to do its basic needs work. Uh, not much is going to change there. Uh, if folks don't have a house, if they're not uh, well fed, uh, if they don't have the basic needs, uh, none of the things we've talked about will be uh, possible for them, right? So it's an important piece of the foundation. It will continue to be an important piece of the foundation, and you'll see that work to continue. Um, how, uh, what about the arts, right? Because there's been a major focus on the arts, and, and you saw arts sort of sprinkled uh, throughout a couple of these things. I think I'll, I, I can speak for the board and staff and say that, that arts is a, is a core um, uh, uh, issue or core uh, concern of the foundation and will continue to be supported. You saw that it's part of the community building piece, it's part of what brings people together, it's part of what empowers folks, and it's part of the educational piece. The more of that creativity and the more pieces of the brain we can use, I believe the better off we are. So you see the arts sprinkled throughout both of these, uh, two of these main goals that the foundation is moving forward, and it will continue to be a priority for the foundation. The last thing is how, how does all of this affect the donor advised funds? And the truth is it doesn't affect the donor advised funds much at all because uh, all of those funds are exactly what they're called. Uh, a donor comes to the foundation and says, I have an interest in X, Y, or Z, and the foundation will manage that money 
and do um, carry out the wishes of the donor. So the donor advised funds will not be affected by the kind of stuff we're talking about. Um, however, my guess is that they will continue to engage you around the analysis that we have and continue to get you to think with us in some different ways. So, uh, so those were the main questions that came out of, of the survey that we had. I know that these aren't the only questions that folks have. I do encourage you tonight to stick around and, and talk to the staff and to the board about what you've seen tonight, express any of the concerns that you may have because again, the board and staff is coming back tomorrow and Thursday to do the last refinement, the last sifting, and to put the sort of dot the I's and cross the T's on all of this work. So if you have anything you want to get into their minds, tonight is the time to do it, right? So, um, so um, I want to do one last thing before I turn it over to Becky here and we get the rest of the evening started. Uh, concretely, I've already talked about the next steps of the board and staff retreat over the next couple of days. Um, in June, all of this refined work is going to come to the board for a final approval, or that's the hope. We'll keep our fingers crossed. And then there's going to be a report back to the community on, the, uh, on all of the things we've talked about tonight in a much nicer form, right? It'll be the, the official version of the foundation. The foundation will do a good job of reporting to the stakeholders and really um, uh, um, spreading the word of this new direction far and wide. So, uh, so with that, uh, that's all that I had for tonight. I certainly appreciate y'all having me here. And thanks again to the board and staff for allowing me to be part of this process. It's been a wonderful learning uh, adventure. I feel um, very solid and confident about the direction of the foundation, and I'm excited to see this next step take place. With all that said, I'm going to turn it over to Becky to get us moving into the next piece of the night. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.